All right, so we are recording this um, this session and it's gonna be available on YouTube. I'm gonna uh, email it just like I did the last one. Uh, this is lab two. The expectation here is that you've done lab one um, and you understand how to run the ID, how to uh, do a simulation, create stimuli and all that kind of stuff. And in the last lab, the code was given to you. In this one, it asks you to write a piece of code that accomplishes something. So, and, and a couple of things we talked about in the previous, uh, when we were talking about kind of a lab one, is we chatted about the, the, uh, the, the external view of the chip, how the inputs come in, the fact that there are 16 inputs, uh, IO pins, the only uh, pins that are fixed are the ground and the VCC pin, pin five and 14 that you have no control over. All the other ones you can configure through the special function register. And then later on, we talked about these concepts that the port A, R A zero to R A seven, which are actually pins out here, are directly connected to port A. So you can actually go to port A and bit zero of port A is a representative of R A. And then later on, we talked about this, the, the fact that there is this other register called uh, Trish A uh, and Trish for, for port A and Trish B for port B. And if you were to set the value of Trish A bit to a one, that would make that pin an input into the processor. If you set it to zero, it would make it an output out of the processor, okay? So you can configure it whichever way you want to do it. So now that-, so now that we, is, uh, uh, is that the only purpose for the, the Trish A and the Trish B uh, ports? Like, is that literally their only purpose? That's the Just purpose. And most of the special function registers, they have one purpose in life and that's it. Okay, cool. Even Thank that you. makes it really complicated between me and you, Tim. Um, the, even that, you know, there are so many registers to keep them all in your head is uh, somewhat challenging, but that's a great question. Yeah, Trish A and Trish B's job is to set the direction. And by the way, one other point that causes confusion, when we say input, that is input to the processor. When we say output, out of the processor, okay? So processor is their point of reference. When you say input is it from the point of view of the processor. Okay, so we, we talked about all that stuff. So now what we're gonna do, they, they want us to build this thing. They wanna build this thing and they want, they want the operand is a fancy way of saying, if, I, if I'm adding two numbers, let's say, if I add two numbers, I have to have two numbers to add together. Each one of those numbers are referred to as operands. So, so for example, if I have one zero one zero and one one one, uh, but let's say I make it difficult. Um, zero. This this is. We're gonna call this one. Let's say operand two. We're gonna call this one operand one, and the result, of course, is the sum of these two. Right. If I manually sum them, I can say zero plus zero is zero. One plus one is zero with a carry. Carry plus that is um, one plus one is a zero. Then there's another carry here. Then it's a zero. Then it's a one. That worked out interesting. Okay. So so in this particular case, you notice that the sum is how many bits? My my operands were only four bits. My sum is five bits. Okay, and what they're telling us is that operand one should come from pin RA zero through, I'm sorry, RA or RB, RB. And this port should come from RA, RB uh, four to RB um, seven. Okay, so, so that's what they're telling us. And then the sum, they want us to put it coming out of uh, RA0 through RA4. So that's what they want us to do. All right, so, uh, so, so now we gotta figure out how we're gonna do that. We can jump right in and try to write the code. That usually takes longer if you try to do that because trying to keep it all in your head 
it's kind of hard. So what, and then also for your lab report, you're required, you're required to do a pseudo code. So now we're gonna do a pseudo code together just to get a sense of um, what needs to happen at the highest level. Again, we're not trying to be syntactically correct. We just want to describe what has to happen, okay? So, so and we can be pretty broad. You don't have to be very specific, but it's specific enough so it's a, a smaller piece of your problem you're trying to solve. So in my case, my, my pseudo code is gonna, I, I like to use C-like or English sentences to do that. You can you can do whatever whatever you is easier for you to remember. So a pseudocode for this would be well, I think we did this last time. Get so you want to uh, so so we got to do some initialization, right? So we just got to do an initialization. You can leave it at this level, or you can say you got to initialize port A and B, right? And how you're gonna do it, you gotta have certain part of port A be an output, certain part of port B be an input and things like that. Then you wanna get operand A, then you wanna get uh, operand one, then you wanna get operand two, and you're gonna do a sum of those things. You wanna, you wanna do, uh, Display display result, and then wait for next input. That's pretty much it. That's that's your sum. You get the first operand, you get the second operand, you add it. So what I did, I took the, the whole problem rather than simple now, but I took the whole problem and tried to break it up to its little components. So this is, this is the pseudocode, you're done. A lot of people, a lot of people, once they write the pseudocode, then they use the pseudocode and make it a comment in their code, okay? And then use that to build the rest of the code. So far so good? Any question on what a pseudocode is? Now let's just ju right, jump in. I'm, I'm gonna go through the process of how I would do the lab and you don't have to do it this way. We'll just give you one way of doing it. So if I was doing this lab, so I know, I know there's a bunch of things in lab one where I can directly use. So what I will do is I will say, okay, so let me go ahead and open up my project one, lab one. I've done that lab one before. So I'm gonna open up the project. And I'm just gonna copy this piece of code. Notice I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna use the code that is here. Uh, I'm gonna close this project because I don't wanna mess up my old project or have that mess me up, uh, I have it open. Sometimes you even you have multiple projects open. You think you think you're working on one project while you're while you're actually it, it assumes you're working on a different project and it causes all kinds of issues. I'm going to start a new one. For I'm just uh, we always I'm just going to go through the process one more time. This microchip encoded standalone project. Um, we are using um, we are using the. Um, Eight, I think we're using the eight advanced eight bed. So it's uh, pick 12, oh, I'm sorry, 18 F 12, 20, great. So that's the process that I'm using, say next. Simulator is all we're gonna do today. So we're just gonna be able to simulate it. And MASM, the MP lab assembler is what we're gonna use. The project, I've got to call it the um, test 
uh, create a directory. I always like to create a directory. I'm going to set this project as my main project. That's the one I'm working on because if that's set, it's going to work on something else. And then I'm going to create it. Great. And then right click on the source, say, okay, I got a new, and I'm just going to do a simple one. And for lack of better one, I'm going to call it main test. You can call it whatever you like. And then I, I don't want this notice. I copied and pasted everything from chapter one. Make sure you go back and say, okay, this is a main test. So make sure your comments track what you're doing. The description is these are sample, sample codes for class use. And of course, then I go down here and take a look at what I can keep, what I don't want to keep. Well, I want to keep this. This piece is going to stay with you every project. So no point. Don't mess with it. Just leave it alone. Because if you mess with this and something goes wrong, you're going to spend a fair amount of time dealing with it. The error messages are not very descriptive. I want to use port A. I want to use port B. I want to use Trish A, Trish B. And this one's remember, at con one determines whether you have a digital or analog stuff. And I have some variable, but I'm not really sure what the name of the variables are. So I'm not going to keep them around to make a mess of it. If I need one, I'll come back up and write the new one. Although I can guess, I'm, I probably need some place, right? I need some place to keep my operand one. So if proper and one is probably a variable I want. So maybe I'll do that, OK? And I'm going to start, remember, memory location starts from. So, so these guys. These guys are SFRs, right? SFRs that I plan to use, the special function register I plan to use, SF. On the other hand, these are the stuff I don't really plan to, uh, these are my temporary data if they got my GPR, so that that's the stars here. So those are my variables location that I'm gonna use, memory location I'm gonna to use to keep my stuff. And then, uh, Define probably needs something called operand two potentially, so I can keep my operand two in there. And notice how I'm using this one location after the, the other rather than jumping around. It's good to allocate them sequentially so you don't end up over allocating. There's nothing in here that prevents you from naming same location two different ways. Then you're gonna have all kinds of problems that are to debug it too. So try to kind of be very systematic about how you do this. I so may quick. or may not need a place for my result, but I'll, as long as I'm here, so I don't have to come back, I'll just do a result. Oops, and we are using capital, everything capital. So let's do that. And let's put that in location two. And maybe, I don't know, maybe I want to remember the last value someplace. If it has value, maybe not. So, so these are some. I do want my code to locations eight zero. Probably I need all this locate stuff here, but I'm not necessarily going to need all this junk that was lab one. So I'm going to get rid of lab one. Okay. So, so let's let's go here and see how much of this do I really need. So, so this would be the initialization portion. Remember when we did our pseudocode, we had to initialize, right? So I've got my initialization code. And if you had this on a place, you can copy and paste it in here. I don't have it, so I have to type it. And then once the initialization is done, at some point I have to come back and I have to um, get operand one. Then at some point I have to come back and get operand two. At some point I have to do the sum, oops, sum the values. And at some point I have to come back and um, display it, display results. And then at some point I have to wait until input changes. 
because I don't want to keep summing things if it's the same number and the user hasn't changed their number yet. Okay, so now the question is, uh, so let's go back to the initialization. Port A, we always clear it just to make sure everything is okay. We set it to 7F just to make sure that all uh, uh, inputs and outputs are digital. And then we come here. So what do you, rem so you remember that our input came in where? All of our input came in through port B, right? So initialize the, so, so what we're gonna do, I'm not gonna do all that stuff. So, so basically we're gonna set, we want in all port B is input, right? Because one half, one half gives me upper end one, the other half gives me upper end B. So what I want, I want all of this to be input. Do you remember what makes an input? One or zero? A one. A one, which means these would be FF. Now, what did I want my, did, did, so that takes care of port, port uh, B. What do we so want port A to be? Well, in that step, basically, it's just moving the literal value of FF to W, right? And then the next step would move W to Tris B. Yeah, so yeah. I would all. like I would like to move FF directly into Tris B, but I can't. There is no connection of me moving constants directly into a register. I have to put it in W register, then I have to move it up. Okay. And then anytime you have a value stored in W, if you move something else to it, it basically deletes the first one and only takes the second one, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Overwrites it. Another way to think about it is overwrites it. Override, yeah. Thank you. So so the next step would be make all of port A. Uh, no, I really don't need to make all of port A input, but it's this uh, output. Uh, so I just make, I just want, because I'm using, I'm using poor, I'm using R A, I think is zero through four as output, right? So I wanna make sure they are an output. I really, usually if I'm not using something, I make it an input because it's safer to make it an input. It doesn't overdrive something. So if I want input, so, z, so basically what I want to put I want to make sure those pins are zero, which means what I will put in is one, 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 zero, 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 zero. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to set this one to E zero. And then I'm going to move it to Trish A. Now Trish A is set up that way. Does that make sense to everybody? Any questions? I actually answered a lot of questions. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, this was pretty helpful. Yeah, I was, I was kind of wondering because we've done zeros and ones and Fs, but I, I didn't think to add some of the other hex digits to change the four bits. So it makes a lot of sense. So thank you. Yeah, and, and this stuff was remainder from the last one. So we really can get rid of it, right? This was, remember to get rid of the junk from lab one that you don't need. I think I'm thinking right now, that's all the initialization we have to do. So the next idea is I'm gonna get port A, uh, get, get the operand one. So now the question becomes, how do I get operand one? Okay, so, um, so, so we'll think about it. So, okay, where is operand one? Operand one is basically in the lower four bits, right? Lower four bits, so up, up, operand A really is sitting in the lower four bed of port B. I want to get that out. So what I'm going to do, this is a quick, this, this is another instruction called move FF, moves one register to another register. I, I don't want to mess with port B and change the value user put in there. So I'm going to move it to operand one. Okay. Now it's there, I'm done. Actually, that's all it was, it's done. Except I only want, my interest is only for, I wanna just, wanna just keep RA, RB, 
zero to three. And I wanna get rid of everything that is not that. So I wanna zero out bits four, five, six, and seven. And if you remember, we kind of chatted with that. This is called masking, which does and uh, which with what I could do is move WF, move WF is very, um, I'm sorry, move LW, just move a constant into W register. And then what I could do is put a zero X zero F. And then what I could do, I can do an and WF. I can take whatever is in operand one and, uh, and put it in, uh, put it back in operand one. My D is equal to one. You see that what I'm doing here? So what I would like you guys to do, just before I go forward, I wanna make sure we are all on the same page. So the exercise for you folks is this. So let's say when this instruction starts, port B has zero, one, zero, one, 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 zero, zero in it. Remember this is operand one, this is operand two. I want you guys to text chat with me and tell me what after at this point what do you expect to be in up one i'll be right back you go ahead and put it in the chat all right so we're back so for operand two you can kind of do exactly the same thing uh, but this time you're interested in the upper byte so you're interested in um, if it's port B coming in and let's say port B, oops. Port B's got, so port B has, um, let's say one, zero, one, 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 zero, zero in it. Uh, so once again, the way we are, the problem set is done is this should be my operand one, this should be my operand two. So the question for the class, for you guys is if you could, oh, perfect, somebody's ahead of, you guys are way ahead of me, good, good deal. Um, so, so, uh, so yeah, so this, this has to be changed to F zero because I only wanna get, I wanna end it with this. So it zeroes out this piece and gets me this. All right. So, so let me go ahead and do that. And, and please jump in if you have any question. I'm assuming we are all okay and following everything. Uh, this is your time to ask this questions. Okay, so all I have to do is make this an F0. Are we done? Is this, is this operand one ready to roll? Can I just, is it correct? So, so I'll put the number back up. Let's say, let's say then port B, let's say port B, port B had given me 110 and 1001. This was supposed to be operand one. This is supposed to be operand two. Is operand two has 110 in it. Yeah, so you, almost there. So, so yes, the, the, your uh, the, Brad, your answer is right on. So basically, it says operand two right now has one one zero zero in it. That's not good enough. I got to take this and move it down there. I can do this a couple of different ways. I can do it using rotate right to move things four times to do that instruction four times and you move it four times to the right location. There is another kind of a quick, um, quick uh, way of doing it. It's called swap nibbles. Nibble is the four bits. So what, what I could do, one, another way we could do this is if I right after this, I say swap. I'm looking at the instruction right now, swap F. 
misspelled it off, missing the A. Swap. And then what I could do, uh, I could say stat up to, and then put the result back into the same location. So what that is gonna do is basically gonna swap the location of 000, zero, zero and the other one. So it's basically gonna, oops. It's gonna take this piece, put it over here, take this piece, put it back here. So when we get down here, up to it has zero, 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 one, one, zero, zero. Looks great. Okay. Um, so pretty much done. Hopefully you guys get a sense of how to do the pseudo code, how to do the, the, the other stuff. And then, then the, oh, so let's go. To sum it, you just use an add. There is an add function, you just do the add. You may have to rotate it. So no, actually you don't have to rotate it. It comes out right. You write it to port A and it gets displayed. Now, the question is how do you wait? How do you wait until the data changes? So what you could do at this point, what you could do is say, okay, look, I have, I know my input comes in I know my input comes in in uh, port B. I can save the last value of port B in a register. I just move it, move it from port B there. Then what I could do, I could create this thing I'll call wait. Okay, a label actually, let's just call it. Uh, a typical, it uh, doesn't matter. What, whatever your standard is fine. You can capitalize it, not capitalize it, whatever works for you. Then you could say, okay, I really would like to sit in this here, wait until a value changes. How could I detect the values changes? And one of the trick things we have is um, called uh, exclusive or. So what I could do, I could, um, I could um, do this. I could uh, move F port B zero. What does that do? Remember, we did that in the beginning. It takes whatever the value is in port B and puts it in zero. And then what I'll do is I'll do an X or WF. And I say, okay, let's see if that's the same as last value. And I don't want to destroy it, so I'll put a zero so it goes back in there. So now comes something that we haven't really spent time on is when I, oh, I was wondering why that wasn't turning blue or was <laughs> spelled incorrectly. Okay, so, so now what it does is when it's going to take when value of port B and last value are exactly the same, this becomes a zero. So result is zero only when port B is equal to last value. So as long as it's equal, then you get a zero, then there are these branches. We haven't spent a lot of time talking about branches but you can branch when zero. So as long as the previous instruction result is zero, I can do a branch. And as long as it's zero, that means not, the user has not changed the value of the input. So I'll just sit here. So it keeps sitting here until the value changes. When the value change, you can say um, branch, unconditional branch, it just jumps, it doesn't care what this situation is, to start. So I can start doing this process all over again. And I really don't have to reinitialize everything, it's done. I just gotta get the different operands and move. So this code is not complete, but it kind of gives you a sense of where we need to be. So, so Kind of, we are, we're almost, we're out of time, but that's, I'm gonna take a little bit extra time to go through the, kind of summarize this. So when you write your report, 
you will have the disassembled code always. But before that, you will have the um, pseudocode. And the pseudocode doesn't have to be anything more fancy than what I have here. It says these are the major steps you got to do to get this job done. Then what I would look for is to, in your disassemble code, to see comments corresponding to your pseudocode. Which block are you doing? Okay. So for, for my, in my case, you, for every one of these items, you can find a segment of code that is doing that job. Okay. And then, of course, the disassembled code, then you want to put in the stimuli. So in this case, you have all your inputs are coming from RB0 through RB8. So you're going to have literally got to go in here and keep adding uh, RB. So you add, oops. So start with RB0, um, then uh, you add RB1, on and on and on, and then, and then and so so that's that's definitely, you're gonna have a picture that shows me you have RB0 through RB7 in your stimuli, and then your, var uh, then your variables shows me what you're looking at. In this case, we're hopefully we're looking at the sum, port B, port A, and all of that to see if the result is actually going from one location to the other location. Okay. And then finally, you will have a table, maybe three columns, which says, I inputted these values for my operand one, operand two in port B. This is what I got. This is what I expected to get was the second column. This is what I got in uh, the other part. So any, any questions? So yeah, so there was, there's a little bit of a chat going on. I did not complete the whole steps, leaving something for you guys to work on, which is the sum portion and the displaying the result, which is basically moving you to port A, right? A uh, quick question, Professor. Sure. This code, I know it's not 100% complete, but could you be able to debug this code? Is it like functional just so we can see how the variables change throughout? Sure, should be, should be good enough. I mean, it won't do the right thing, but should be good enough that I can, let's see. Yeah, build successful. So build is successful. So now what I can do, I can say, okay, debug, debug main. Okay. And then I might most likely I'm sitting in here. That would be my guess. Okay, let's find out. You see that? Yeah. So, so by the way, if you click on a number, it puts this. Uh, so, so for example, let's say, let's say I always want to, I always want to know this one. I want to make this a breakpoint. So I click on the number, it becomes a breakpoint. I click on it again, it goes away. So I click on it, it becomes a breakpoint. Then I go to my debug. Oh, how come it's still running? Uh, uh, it's not running anymore. Oh, I stopped it. That was yeah. very nice. Okay, notice how it ran and stopped right there. Yes. So now I can go to the debug and I want to, uh, so what I'll do, I can have options of F7 to step into it. I can step over things or I can continue running. So for example, if I say F5, which is for the continue, it's gonna run and stop here. But if I say, I think it's F7. Well, let me F7, check. yeah. If I say F7 is gonna do one step at a time and watch what happens. See that? And by the way, you can also look at the variable and see what happens. The one that got changed last is in red, okay? Okay, all right. Uh, can now, you make Breaking point at 37, and just so we can see. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm um, gonna I'm gonna mess up. So I'm gonna go over here. See here, I'm gonna mess one of these R port B, so it breaks out of this loop. When I give it a new input, say, hey, you gotta go do something new. So I'm gonna hit this one. Might as well hit this one too. So now when I come back here, sometimes you have to do it twice. But I've got back here, and I do F7. Oh, let's take a look at the variables too. See port B changed to three, you see that? So my yeah. operands are zero and three, right? 
Okay. So yeah. now, now, now my, uh, my, uh, I'm right about here trying to see if it's zero or not. And since we did the exclusive or uh, between three and the original was zero, you're, you're not going to be zero. So, um, so the branch zero will fail and it will jump to the start, hopefully. Let's see if it happens. Oh, there we go. So I'm up here now. So, so watch, watch the, actually, let me go ahead and, uh, I forget what the, uh, so support. So let's go ahead and add a couple other things in here. So it would be more interesting. I think op one was zero X80. And oh, it already was there. So let's get rid of it. And add uh, at least up one to it too. Zero X eight one. Zero X eight. Okay, so that's good. That's remember up zero and up one. So, so what does it this do? This is supposed to take port B, which is three, and it's supposed to put it in eighty, right? That's what the instruction says to do. Move FF port B to up one. So let's see F seven. There it is. You see the red. And now we're gonna end it with this and we're not gonna see any difference because it was the same thing, right? Now port, notice that what happened now I'm here, I took port B and I put it in 81 up two. Now I'm gonna end it with F. Now what you're gonna see after you finish should go to zero, right? You see that? So now my up two is zero. Swap won't show you anything. And then since I didn't do anything, did that answer your question, Vlad? Yeah, I was just curious how like it works through, but I guess there's something just to uh, play around with. Well, and this is really important because what yeah. you have to do is you say, okay, my instruction is supposed to do this. Does it do it? Then you look at the result to see if it did what you thought it was doing. That's All right. right. Uh, also, I think um, I think it's that like uh, bottom bottom right there has some kind of like magic stick in the uh variables table i believe there it should display like a decimal value and binary values uh for people that want to do it uh i don't know if you can see it but it's like far far right that kind of has like a a little bit higher up uh to the right right there yep so it has oh, a cool yeah. Oh, that's is pretty cool. So you can look at it in different formats. Yeah, different kinds of forms. Well, whatever ones you'd like. Because sometimes like hex, then you don't have to like, uh, what's it called? Translate it to binary values or decimal values. So it'll just- Let's, let's see it. what happens. Let's, let's make it a binary value. Oh, cool. Cool. That, yeah, that's a really nice feature. And I believe there's a decimal value in there as yes. well that displays like the number of the binary value. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, that's really cool that you don't have to think about, well, what, what is three or... Yeah, well, yeah. A exactly. good skill at this juncture, but that's okay. <laughs> that looks great. That was, a, that was a great addition. Any last minute questions before we call it good for today? So, so yes, I, I didn't do the sum. I expect you to go back and do that and let me know if you have any question or display and then make sure you go back and make sure you understand all the pieces. Uh, you're still doing office hours today, right? Yes. Uh, can I ask you a question about the display? Sure, go for uh, it. Just because I'm, I mean, obviously I'm used to C and all that stuff. So display doesn't exactly mean obviously put it out on the console right it's just mainly move it to the correct registry yeah basically because okay. i mean it's, it's i mean let's say let's say the result the result has the value right the, you did the sum mm -hmm. you might just do a move ff results i think it called it result but i'll go double check yeah. and that just goes to yeah port a yeah Okay. I think uh, you like misspelled result. There's like a C in it. Okay. I'm used to like print F and you know that kind of stuff. 
for when I hear. No, 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 no. Because the idea is that those pins are coming out. If you have an LCD display, you hook it up to the LCD display. If you're old, you know, we're kind of poor, poor designer. Then you got a bunch of LEDs. You hook it up to a bunch of LEDs and they're like that. Gotcha. Okay, that makes sense. Or maybe even a seven-segment display. Yeah. Our last quarter. <laughs> oh my god. I don't know anybody who uses them, but that's okay. You give me PTSD. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then, of course, as long as we are here, might as well do it. It's just the sum would be what? Uh, it'd be add WF. And then you're just going to add op one and op two, right? Can and then you do zero. that? Can you do that? Oh, no, I'm sorry. You, um, you're, you got the right idea. You, so you have to move. Maybe move off one. So move. How, how do we move? Yeah, hold on. Move F, right? Yeah, move F. And then that's going to be off one and then one or zero. That's right. Because if you do one, it just goes back to off one. That's not big. And by the way, that that is probably the single biggest problem for people run into is they do, either don't put a zero in there or leave a one there. And that then you can then you debug it. You say, I, I know I'm doing the right thing, but the computer is not doing the right thing. And just, yeah, that's kind of conversation. Anyway, so now you can. Okay. If you like. Not really necessary, but. So lab two is your first time you're coding. So you want to make sure you get really comfortable with all the concepts and putting it together because now lab three just adds another variable and another new thing for you to integrate when we get there. But for now, focus on getting this done and we'll talk about that next week. Any last minute questions before we call it good for today? 